Everybody agree with that plan? Can we can we make that a plan tonight? Can we make that a plan tonight? Praise the Lord. Come in here, kind of committed to God. So if I was kind of committed to God, that means the other kind that what was left over was committed to Satan. Come on, somebody. But I pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare by the power invested in me as the bishop of this. This great ministry known as the Spirit of Jesus Deliverance Center, that you will walk out of here committed to God and uncommitted to Satan. My Lord. The title of our sermon tonight is Committed. 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 In the name of Jesus. If you have your Bibles, you can turn your Bibles to Matthew. Matthew. We will be reading the New Living Translation, Matthew 4. Matthew 4, verses 1 through 11. 1 through 11. You just don't know, you just don't know the power that you have. And we're going to bring you into the knowledge thereof or, or you're going to you empty your tank. And you're going to say, I don't want no more of this. But I pray in the name of Jesus. Whichever route you go, don't you blame nobody. Don't you blame nobody for the goodness that's going to come your way. Don't you blame nobody for the heartache that's going to come your way. The goodness that comes your way is going to come from God. The heartache is going to come your way, but it's going to come from God because of your lack of choosing Him. Come on, somebody. And even if I choose Him, I will not be wavered because of my choice. My choice says, all is well, no matter what it looks like. Amen. All is well, no matter what it looks like. If you're at Matthew 4, say amen. amen. All right. And the Word of God reads, Then Jesus led by the Spirit into the wilderness. To be tempted there by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights he fasted and became hungry. During that time, the devil came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus told him, No, the scriptures say, People do not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. The devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple, and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say, He will order His angels to protect you, and they will hold you up with their hands, so you won't even hurt your foot on the stone. Jesus responded, The scriptures also say, You must not test the Lord your God. Next, the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I will give it all to you, he said, if you will kneel down and worship me. Get out of here, Satan, Jesus told him. For the scripture said, you must worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And the devil went away and the angels came and took care of Jesus. Committed, saints. Committed. I come to you today and I think that you say that when we read this particular passage, we, we see how committed Jesus was. It appeared to be to the scriptures. Uh, we see how committed Jesus was unto the Father. But I come to tell you, this was not about your eyesight or about your understanding. This was to bring Jesus into the awareness of who he was. Come on, somebody. What we don't understand is we, we keep, I heard someone say tonight, I, I wish I could only know what God wanted me to do. And the reason we don't know what God wants us to do, because we clearly don't really believe that we yet belong to God. Come on, somebody. Because I, I don't believe I belong to God because not all my line, my thinking don't seem to line up. I don't always appear to think that the way that I should think if I'm God's child. Sometimes I think about things that I ain't got no business thinking about. But I want to tell you, baby, it took you 30 years to get that thinking in your head. Come on, somebody. And some of y'all, it took you 58 like me to get that thinking in your head. God said, it ain't going to go out in the night. Oh, amen. But I don't want it to be the main course anymore. It could be the residue, but I don't want it to be the pureness of who you are anymore. So this whole thing about Jesus Christ was not for you and I to see. We always see.
sit and we 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 look at the Bible in in, in second in, in second tense. We meaning we look at the Bible from a standpoint of of, of what God uh, is saying to us and what what Jesus is doing, so I can understand. But I want to bring you to a place as Jesus is, we are to be. He was coming into the understanding of who He was. Stop looking at the position of a viewer. And start looking at the position of a doer. Come on, somebody. I don't just need to look and see. Sometimes I need to go through in order to be. Come on, somebody. But I need you to understand right now. Every time trouble comes your way, the first thing that comes out of your mouth is devil riding my bike. First thing come out your mouth, I wish the devil would leave me alone. And I come to tell you if you the only reason you, you you're calling on the devil because that's all you see is talk to me somebody. I need you to understand that if you really, really get to the place of understanding who, who this world really belongs to, you will understand that whatever I'm going through, whatever I've been set up for, I've been set up by God. But if I got my mind on Satan, my Lord, my Lord. Hmm. I will even give him credit. When God is trying to make me all that I'm supposed to be, I will still yet give the credit to the devil because my mind is on where I live. Come on, somebody. My mind is on where I live. Lord, Lord, Lord. Can't tell you what's going on in Hollywood, Hollywood, California when I live in Hollywood, Florida. My mind is on where I live. If I live in the realm of Satan, I'm going to always say Satan is doing this and Satan is doing that. But if I live in the place that God has called me to live in, in his presence, no matter what. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'll always see things from the standpoint of what God is doing in order to bring me into the human being he wants me to become. Come on, somebody. Yes, sir. Yes. A human being, somebody to God. A human being made by God. A human For God. The Bible tells me it says that Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Now I need you to understand as, <laughs> as we as we go through this particular passage, the devil don't need to lead you to tempt you for himself. God leads you because he said, You are mine, and I'm gonna position you to meet. What you think you can't over but talk to me. I'm going to position you to meet what you think you can't overcome. Thank you. And I need you to understand that this meeting is not a happenstance. I need you to understand that this is orchestrated by the creator. I need you to understand it is orchestrated by the one I live for. I need you to understand it is orchestrated by the one I worship. I need you to understand today. Thank you. Thank you. There's nothing that goes on in this place God created that He ain't got a hand in. Yes, sir. There's nothing that goes on in this place that God created that He ain't got a hand in. See, the problem is you can't, you, you, you still sit here. Focusing on the, the big world when the world is really giving you trouble is your world. Come on, somebody. I, I, I need you. I need you to understand that, that I need to get my eyes off of that world and stop focusing on the world that God wants me to be concerned about. The world in which He created in me. Lord have mercy. Death And He says, So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this world that you have created and I'm going I'm 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 to remove the heads and I'm going I'm I'm to send you into the wilderness. 40 days and 40 nights. Oh, Lord. Oh. He said, why are you out there? I, I, I want to see what you, come on somebody, learn about your father. Oh. I need to know what you learned about your father through your brother, Jesus Christ. Amen. You'll never know whether you know what you know until you get in a position to show yourself you know what you know or you don't know what you think you know. Uh, I need you to know right now and God said, I'm going to position you to take your little world. And he said, I ain't going to throw no rocks at it. 
I'm going to make it a rock for me. Come on, somebody. He said, I'm going to make it a rock that you can hit Satan with. Come on, somebody. My Lord. I, I, I'm going to take that world that you got, and I'm going to turn it upside down. And I'm, 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 I'm see, everybody worried about landing on solid ground. But I'm worried about becoming the solid ground that somebody else can land on. I need your help today. I really, really need you to help me right now because I, 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 I got all these people looking for solid ground to land on. But, but I don't want to be the sacrifice if God called me to be the sacrifice. He said, somebody's got to be the it's over troubled water. Are you willing to be that bridge so I can get to the next level? My God. <laughs> Somebody's got to be My God. the bridge over troubled waters. Mm. But in order to be a bridge over troubled waters, you got to know uh, know what trouble is all about. You got to you got to know what trouble is. You got to know what to do when trouble comes. I need to know right now. Are you willing to be? The bridge at nine o'clock when the alarm uh, um, goes off to tell me wake up with Jesus, resting with Jesus is time for it. But saints, the Lord put him in a position to show him. Mm. Thirty years, Jesus, I I have prepared you for this hour. Thirty years, Jesus, I have prepared you for a three year ministry. Thirty years, Jesus. I have prepared you. Now the only way am I going to know whether or not you're ready or not if only if you know whether you are. So I'm going to take your world that you have shaped, formed, and groomed for 30 years and, and I'm going to see is there anything in there of me. Come on somebody. Is there anything in your world of God? I, I, I need to know tonight because if there's anything in there of God when time and I can't fight no more. I was yet standing. I was standing on the ground that God has set me on it. When I stand on that ground, I will exhibit love. Come on, somebody. When he put me in prison, I will exhibit peace. Come on, somebody. When he put me in hell, I will yet exhibit love. I don't care where he placed me. I'm going to show up for God. I don't care where he put me. I must. I don't care where he put me. I'm going to show out for God. Because my name, I can't get away from it. My name ain't on the marquee. And the name on the marquee says, it used to say Maurice, all about Maurice. The name on the marquee said Maurice. If you ain't got nothing for Maurice, Maurice ain't got nothing for you. The name on the marquee. But one day, I looked up the, the marquee, and Maurice needed fifteen hundred dollars not to go to prison, and Maurice couldn't give Maurice fifteen hundred dollars. And that day, I took my name off the marquee, and I realized I said the name on the marquee is a God that's for me. Come on, somebody! I need that name to, to change. I need you to take the name. Down and put up there, name God. And God is for me and not a God that is about me. I need you to understand tonight yes. that when God, when, when the devil told him, Can you turn it, will you turn this stone into bread so you can feed Sister Irma so she don't go slap that lady on the job? Please, Peter, would you turn this stone into bread? It was not that Jesus couldn't. You got to imagine this man one day would feed 5,000 with two, two fish and seven loaves of bread. But you're going to tell me he couldn't have changed a rock into a loaf of bread. But he said, I don't want to hinder the work that God is doing on the sister. Y'all better listen to this. I could have fixed it temporarily. But God said he's going to fix it eternally. I don't want to get in the work in the way of the workings of God. He said, I want you to understand that even after the bread is eaten, the man still has to live beyond this particular loaf of bread. So I need you to understand the devil took him to the holy city. He took him to a place that 
he was supposed to be representing. And he told him, jump. He said, if you are all that and you are who you say you are, the devil, the angels will come and save you. But why do you keep sitting there when the devil comes and says, go look like a fool. Why do you volunteer to do what he tells you to do? Go look like a Oh yeah, you know God's going to save you. But it's a shame when, when God got to save you and have a donkey talk to you and tell you don't go no further. Oh, Why I got to... Now you know when a donkey start talking to me, I'm, I'm, I'm low and low in my mentality. I'm low and low in my understanding. But why do I have to wait and let somebody, when a child come up and tell me, you ain't got no business doing that right now. What's wrong with me? I have made, I have allowed Satan to take the worst of me and put the fool in me on this way. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Jesus. Jesus could have jumped. Mm. And he could have failed. He could have got down. And he, it, no, he Jesus, he would have got up. But what would have made him a fool? Listen to somebody that hates God. My God. Jesus. What makes us a fool? When we know God ain't telling us to cheat on our wives and we cheat, that makes you look like a fool. And I want to tell you, if you listen to Satan, you ain't looking like a fool. You are a fool. I know y'all don't like me tonight. Tell that truth. Tell that truth. No longer concerned about looking like it. I don't have to look like what I am. Why do I keep listening and allowing Satan? And the thing about it is, the thing that really messes me up is, and this is why, this is how Satan gets embedded in your spirit. When he gets you to a place where he say, don't worry about it, don't nobody know, ain't nobody seeing you. Oh my God, oh my God. Great. The worst place, I'd rather somebody else see me. Because now they can help me. <laughs> but when I isolate myself, he gets that stupidness embedded in me. Yes, my Lord. My God. That, that stupidness comes down and he said, he said, I don't like this bed right here. I, I want a pillow top. Come on, get me a pillow top. Go get me a pillow top. I wanna, I'm going to get embedded right here. But, but I, no, I'm gonna, let me slap you upside the head one. Go get me a pillow top. Go cheat on your wife one more time. Go lie to somebody one more time. Get me a pillow talk. I'm gonna keep me you cut your head to you bring me my, my pillow talk. I know. I know. regular mattress. I want a pillow talk because I ain't going nowhere. I'm gonna get embedded in your spirit. Oh, Jesus. All because you think don't nobody. The worst person that can see you is you. Come on, let's go. Because when you when he gets in bed, one thing about him staying there, you know how it was when you was out there. And you when kill me, brother, you know how it was when you was out there. You came from the celebrity, feeling good. That other nigga, that other nigga looked good. You took him on with you. Then the next day you couldn't even sneak him out. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you, you know, you, come on now. I ain't no more had one of them in my bed. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. And so now what do you do? He sits there. He's staying there. You want him out. But he can't go nowhere because you, 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 your sister's on the front. <laughs> 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 He can't go nowhere because who's on the outside? So now you don't want him there, but because he can't go nowhere and you ain't asking to leave, he don't understand why you asked him to leave. So now he feels like he's at. Oh boy! Oh boy! Mm. Mm. Read your business. <laughs> She ain't never stayed out on that porch that long. <laughs> and he laid up in the bed. You ain't got breakfast yet? <laughs> yeah, we have a breakfast. Yeah, we have a breakfast. You ain't home. Well, I had a flashback right there. 
the young for you. <laughs> but he has made himself comfortable because of your situation. He has made himself comfortable because now you are ashamed of him. And then when, so now your shame begins to hide him because you don't want somebody else to see him. So now, now, you know, it's just like a straight cat. Now you don't let him stay two minutes past what you wanted him to stay. And every time you come home, he's sitting on your front porch, baby, how you doing? That's right. That's See, you are still committed to the moment. A moment in which I mistakenly took this ugly Negro home with me. I'm still stuck in a moment that I can't do nothing about. <laughs> and then after I done hit him, for he done hit him, I done hit him, and, and finally when I sneak him out, and he gone, and then about two weeks later, you know, the sister-in-law say, I don't worry, baby, I ain't gonna tell Richard he was over. <laughs> If you were where you were, you would not have intention. See, what took over, and you didn't make the choice. You didn't make the choice. You didn't make the choice. The Bulls Farm didn't make the choice. The ENJ didn't make the choice. The ENJ didn't make the choice. The ENJ didn't, didn't make the choice because I said didn't make the choice. <laughs> For giving me control. It wasn't the alcohol. It was the spirit. Let me tell you something. Only reason you get drunk when you drink. And don't you, don't try it, because some of y'all get drunk. <laughs> Only reason you get drunk when you drink is because it says when I drink Hennessy, I'm supposed to get drunk. Still tradition. You do whatever the spirit say you're supposed to do. <sighs> Can I make this real? Make it real. When I was in the world, when I was in the world, and I was and I was, and I was, and I was doing cocaine. I'm being honest. Can I make this real? Be well, real. One time a guy gave me some stuff, and there was no cocaine in it. But I saw the smoke. And because the smoke said I was supposed to be high, I thought I was high. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, y'all don't get it. What I'm saying is the Spirit tells you what you're supposed to do according to what you're doing. One time, my best friend at the time, being here, he went to Chicago and, and, and we were selling, that back then I was out a long time ago, this was back in the 80s, and we were selling drugs, but I didn't know nothing about selling drugs. So that, that day on the radio, they said, they said 13 indictments had gone down, 13 sealed indictments had gone down. I know we were selling drugs, so I went home and, and I went up in the closet and I got all, I got all the cocaine out the closet, up in the closet, and I got all the cocaine. So I had my little brown bottle, back then you had a little brown bottle, you had a little clip on it, and you pull a little clip out of it. And so when I'm at the club, I got a, so now I'm, 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 I'm straight balling. I got a club, got all cocaine, get cocaine to everybody in the club, everybody thinking they hot. I said, man, no people talking about they, they had no seal indictment. I just got the stuff, I went to the club, I just got everybody high. He said, was everybody high? I said, yeah. He said, on Mattel Talk? All us running around there thinking we were high. On cut. <laughs> Y'all hear me? Because it said if Maurice Robinson gave you some cocaine, it had to be some good stuff. See? 
I want you to get committed to what the scriptures say you should supposed to be committed to. As I close this message tonight, Take your time, I know y'all had a lot of laughs and I, but the laughs there was a point, there was a point being made. A lot of times when you when somebody hurts your feelings, you know what? You just want to be hurt. The person they did nothing, but you're mad at yourself, so you just want to have somebody to blame these feelings That's on. True. You just want to be hurt. That's true. Yeah. Witness. Guilty. Because I can't get I can't get what I want. I can't go where I want to. I can't do what I want to. Somebody come in the house so I can say you hurt me, please. Tell the truth for me. So I don't have to admit to being a fool, because only a fool would hurt them. Sales. Come on now. I need you in my life so I don't have to admit that I'm a fool. Come on now. I'm committed to being foolish. Yes, yes. Forgive I am committed. Forgive me, Jesus. Forgive me, Lord. I, will, I am committed to being foolish. Tell I'm committed to be why? Because I want to look good oh, yeah. to the world. My Lord. My God. I'm committed to being a fool. Because mm. I want to make sure that I know that I'm the man. Jesus. Mm. I'm committed to being a fool. Mm. So I can show people that I'm the bishop and I'm over you. Are you serious? Mm. Don't you know there are opposites to everything? God is a God of opposites. God said, I positioned man to love me, and he did just the opposite. He did not love me. So I gave you the Old Testament, and I positioned you where you, where you were going to try to love me, and you couldn't love me, so, I could, so one day you could love me. He is a God of opposites. So now, if you were capable of being a fool. And he's a God of opposite. He said, when are you going to start walking in your opposite and the opposite of being foolish is wisdom? Amen. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. But the problem is this as I close. Is everybody keep hearing Jesus. See, see, Jesus says, follow me. But he never said, come to me. Yes, he did say, come to me. Come to me, little boy. Come to me as a little child. Read your Bible. He always said, come unto me. Come under the covering of mine to me. Come unto me. 
to me. Come to me and, and accept the covering that I have for you. Come. In other words, if I'm covered by Jesus, I worry about nothing. Glory. We're just trying to go to Jesus without the cover. So tonight I want you to say, you know what? From now on, I am going to go to Jesus, but you know what? If I can't handle something for three minutes, I'm going to figure out how to get unto, under him so I can get to Come on now, Holy Ghost. I'm going to figure out how to get under somebody so I can get to Jesus. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come unto me. But we always heard, come to me. <clears throat> come under. What? Come here, Angel. Come here. She's struggling. I'm a bishop. I want to get to Jesus. Down here, I let her put her hand on my head and say, well, I was once in your same shoes. My God. But under the guidance of Jesus Christ, my God. I can stand next to you my God. and you can stand next to me. And I'm not embarrassed because of what he put, what he put me through. Because without him putting me through what he put me through, I wouldn't be able to minister to. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. But I want to tell people what they need to do. But I won't go under Jesus. As Jesus came unto man, under man, in order to glorify God. I want to stand over people, show them how much I know about the Bible. Show them why I'm a bishop. Show them why I'm in the pulpit and ain't pulling nobody out the pit. I'm in the pulpit, but ain't pulling nobody out the pit. In the pulpit, ain't pulling nobody out the pit, but I'm in the pulpit though. My Lord. Because all I'm concerned about is coming to Jesus. But I don't want to come under submission. I don't want to come under subjection. I don't want to come leaning on his understanding. Come unto me. Come unto me. Always hurt. Always struggle. Because I got to get to Jesus. I got to get to Jesus. Never understand it. I got to first get under the covering of Jesus. What? I got to first get under the understanding of Jesus. And order to get to him. Yes, Come unto me. There is no coming unto him without being committed. I am committed not, not to just walking with Jesus. I'm committed to doing whatever Jesus tells me. Go over there. There's a fish on the edge of the water. Pill and pull it. He's going to come up to you, reach in his mouth, and get two pennies and go pay the taxes. Do whatever he tells me to do. Do whatever he tells me to do. Oh, uh, uh, God, uh, God told Elijah, Elijah, tell Naaman, go down to the Jordan River and dip seven times. Naaman say, aren't the rivers in Damascus better than that old nasty, dirty Jordan? <coughs> Don't want to be subject to anybody or anything. Got to have my name on the marquee. Meaning I don't want to be under nothing or nobody. But I'm going to tell you what made the man of God just said you are a great leader. You are a great bishop. I'm not great. What makes me who I am and always made me who I am, even when I was stuck on stupid, I always position myself to be under people so I can help them. I have positioned myself to be under all of you. Making me subject to hear from God for you. Position myself to be under all of you. Making, to be, making me to be patient unto God for you. And when you understand that thinking right there, I can close this out with, no matter what they do to you, come in, man of God. Come in, man of God. 
I'm good. You can sit down. I got this one. Only both of y'all hitting me. God, <laughs> right, you must have knew I was going to tell him to hit me. You jumped up real fast. <laughs> How that, Miss Nair? <laughs> yeah, come on up here and hit me. I got something for you. <laughs> come on, man of God. Hit me in my chest, man of God. Oh. Hit me, nigga. <laughs> oh. All right, all right. That is no. Man of God. Man of God. Listen to the man of God. I need you to say, you ain't all that. You ain't all that. Don't don't get mad. Don't get mad. Look at you. She had to say one more thing. She said, why she don't even You can't even play like that, right? See all that right? You see? You know that little girl. You don't see that many times. I know you do. Watch this. Watch this. Now when I have come unto God, now I can do what God told me yesterday. He lied on me, he hit me, he cheated on me, he talked about me. Now what am I supposed to do? You know what I remember? So love. I'm supposed to so love. So, still love. Him. He lied on you. So, still love. Him. I, because I have come unto. Because I have come unto. Because I have come unto. God what? So loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He said, no matter what you did, I still said so. No matter what you did, God still said what he still said. I still love you. God so loved the world. But you can't get that until you committed to coming unto Jesus. <laughs> so, one day my wife left me and made me walk from 19th to my sister law house. I went home with her because I said, so, I need a ride. <laughs> But God so loved the world that no matter what you did, no matter what any of, all of us did, He said what? So, so, so I still love you. So love you. Yeah. And that's being committed. That's being committed to coming unto under the understanding of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. There is no getting there without the understanding of who. Jesus Christ. Christ. Come Jesus. unto so you can say no matter what they do to you, no matter what they, they, they won't make you take your coat off because you just going to say so. I still love you. God so loved the world and no matter what we did, he always said so. I gave my son up for that. I gave my son up for that. I gave my son up for that. I am committed I am committed, I am committed, I am committed unto, I am committed to come unto Jesus. Come under the understanding of Jesus Christ so I can always also say so, no matter what somebody does to me. Yes, sir. You've got to have praise somebody. Yeah. My God, my God. Yeah. Hallelujah. And see, if you were here yesterday, if you were here yesterday, our sermon, our topic yesterday was yeah. our duty to God. <laughs> our duty to God. And now, what was that? What is that? Now they, they know the answer. What is our duty to God? To what? Live. So love. So love. See, yeah. our duty to God. That was the title of the sermon yesterday was our duty to God. Yeah. Our duty to God is to what? So love. Isn't that a revelation? Yes, sir. Isn't that God so loved the world. He says so, no matter what. So. But God, she, she, God, she keep, she keep hitting me. I mean, she, she hit me. God says so. You hit me. <laughs> she answered my phone calls today. She answered my phone calls. God said so. You answered my phone calls. <laughs> you like that, sister? You like that, sister? Vanessa? Mother, you like that? Yeah. I love it. Anybody who, anybody who's, who, yeah. anybody who needs help with their soul, come to the altar right <laughs> now.